This is the last of a four-part series on Henry Longfellow's 18th century Dutch clock. Upon purchasing the clock in 1877, Longfellow had it placed on the stairs by the front door in an echo of his 1845 poem, The Old Clock on the Stairs. The poem, however, described a different clock, one he had seen in Elm Knoll, the Pittsfield, Massachusetts home of his wife's grandparents. Halfway up the stairs it stands, in points and beckons with its hands. From its case of massive oak, like a monk who under his cloak crosses himself in sighs, alas, with sorrowful voice to all who pass, forever, never, never, forever. The residents of Pittsfield remained well aware of their town's connection to the famous poem, as can be seen by this 1944 high school yearbook. Elsewhere, however, the clock from the Cambridge house soon replaced the original as the subject of the poem. An 1878 article in Scribner's magazine referred to Henry's new clock as the old clock on the stairs. Haunts of Longfellow, which featured Longfellow's poetry combined with illustrations of scenes from his life, also used an image of the Dutch clock to illustrate the poem. As the Longfellow House became a tourist destination in the 20th century, postcards such as this were sold, perpetuating the myth. Whether Longfellow consciously intended it to happen or not, his poetry helped shape the colonial revival style, especially his placement of the clock. By 1881, Henry's arrangement was on the cover of the influential decorating manual How to Furnish a Home. And from its station in the hall, an ancient timepiece says to all, forever, never, never, forever.